Hey, I'm RC, and in this video series we'll be teaching you how to create an HTML5 multiplayer game using Node.js, Express, and Socket.io. So those are the same technologies that I use in my own video game called Raining Chain, so you can take a look at my game at RainingChain.com if you want to have a rough idea of what is achievable with HTML5. So in this video series, I will assume that you have basic JavaScript knowledge. So if you have never coded in JavaScript before, then I would recommend you to go check out my tutorial about making a single player HTML5 video game by clicking the annotation on the screen. So the first thing I will be covering in this video are the softwares you will need to create your game. So the first and most important software is Node.js. So this will be the server. You will also need NPM, which is the library installer for Node.js. And it comes with Node.js, so you only have one package to download. You will also need a good text editor. You can use pretty much anything you want, but the one I use personally is Notepad++. You will also need a browser, aka a client. Uh, and the one I recommend is Google Chrome. We will also be using two main libraries. The first one is Express that will be used for delivering files. And the second one will be Socket.io that will be used for communication between the client and the server. The link to all of those softwares can be found in the description. So now what I want to do is to cover a little bit about the project folder structure. And this is because this is the first thing we will do. So create an empty project. So a server is split in multiple parts. The first and most important file in our project is the app.js file. So this is the main entry point of our server. This is where we load all the other files and this is where we initialize the server pretty much. Then we have a pick package.json file. So this will be automatically generated with the library installer. It's basically a description of our server, the list of um, libraries we are using, stuff like that. Um, we won't really have to, to change much in that. And actually, we will use the default one. It's going to be real quick. Then we got a not module folder. And this is the folder that contains all the libraries we have. So for example, Express and Socket.io. So we do not modify those, um, this folder manually. Um, what we do is that we ask the um, library installer to install Express, um, Express, for example, and it will do all the modification and it will modify the package.json automatically. So it's pretty convenient. Um, then we got a folder called server that will contain all the logic of our game um, in JS files. And then we got the client folder. So everything in the client folder will be accessible by the clients. Um, things in the server folder however, will not be accessible. So if you have something secure that needs to be secure, put it in the server folder. Otherwise the client will have access to it. So the client is split in three main parts. There's the JavaScript folder. So for the logic, there's the image for images. And then there's the index.html, which is our main page, the web page for our game. So this is how it should look. So you should have a empty app.js file. You should have a server with nothing inside it. You should have a node module that should be empty, a client folder that contains a bunch of images if you want, a bunch of JavaScript file, and your empty index.html file. So the next part will be to download the um, Node.js server. So just download it, install it, and then you're ready to move on to the next step. So now what you want to do is to open a command prompt. So if you're on Windows, simply search for um, command prompt. And if you're on Linux, then you probably already know how to do that. Um, so how the command prompt works is that you have a current directory. So for example, right now my current directory is C user Sam, and I want to change that current directory to the um, directory of my project. So in my case, it's C user Sam YouTube Node.js guide episode one project. So there are multiple ways to do that. The first one is to do it manually. So right now I'm in um, Sam folder. I want to CD, which stands for change directory. So I want to change the directory to YouTube. And then I will want to change my directory to Node.js guide. So CD Node.js guide. And then just continue all the way to episode one. And then to project. There we go. Um, if you want to go backwards, you do CD dot dot. So for example, if I do CD dot dot, you go back to up to your normal C. And you can also do it in one 
go. So you just um, copy paste the link over here. You do CD and then right click. It's a bit weird. Um, copy paste in common prompt is not normal. In order to paste, you need to right click. So it would be CD. Then I right click what I um, copy paste and then I press enter and I will be directly in the right folder. So now that you're here, what you will want to do is to type node like this. And if this happens, so you have a little arrow right here, then this means node was in correctly installed on your software. In the other end, if you type node and you get a message like that, so node is not recognized as an internal or external command, then this means you will have to reset your computer and um, hopefully this will fix the problem. It's because node is not part of your path, which is the list of all the commands you can use. So by resetting the computer, it should fix the problem. If not, then in the description of this video, you will find more um, information about how to fix that problem. Um, and the other software we will use, so the other command is npm, which is our library installer. So the first thing you will want to do is to generate our um, package.json file because we don't have one. Like I said, um, the library installer will do it for us. So we do init. And then we can simply, um, you can put like a description for your game and stuff like that, but it's not really needed. You can just use all the default settings and there we have it. We got our empty package.json file. The next step will be to install our libraries. And in order to do that, you simply type um, npm, which is our library installer, the install command, and then we specify what to install. In our case, we will want to install express. And then you just press enter and you wait and it will automatically download Express. And the second um, software we'll want to install is Socket.io. So NP um, install Socket.io, you press enter and you should have it. So if you take a look at your node uh, module, you should see a bunch of files. So those are Express and um, Socket.io pretty much. So if everything went well, what you will want to do next is to open the app.js file, which is the main entry point of our server. And then we can specify what we want the server to do. In our case, um, we will simply want to console log hello world, for example. So if we save the file and we go here, um, in order to start a server, you will need to use the command node and then the name of the file that should be started. In our case, it's app.js. You do node space app.js, enter, and you should see hello world. And we can do all sorts of things. So we could do a equal one, a equal a plus one, and then we could do console log a, for example. And if we start the server again, we should, see, we should see L world and then two. Obviously we can do more than just printing values, but before getting into the complex stuff, I want to cover a little bit about um, communication. So this is a rough summary of communication that we'll be using for our game. Obviously um, it's a lot more complex than that, but long story short, what you need to do to understand is that there are two types of communication. There's file communication. So when the, the client asks the server for a specific file, for example, the player image, and this will be handled by Express. Um, and then there's the second type of communication that will be handled by socket IO. And it's um, when the client wants to send um, data to the server, for example, it's input. And it's when the server also wants to send data to the client, for example, the player position. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the URL. So this is used in file communication. So when the client has the server for a specific file, the file location will be represented by a URL. And this is how it's um, composed. So there are three main parts. There's the domain, there's the port, and there's the path. You should be familiar with the domain, for example, reigningchain.com, um, google.com, stuff like that. Then there's the port, which is a number. And then finally, there's the path, which is the location of the file on that server. So um, the thing about the port, one way to see the port is that um, a domain could be represented by a laptop and the port could be represented by a USB port. So sometimes you would want a laptop to have multiple device. So the laptop would need multiple USB ports. And the same applies for the main. So on the same website, you could want um, to 
you could want multiple servers to run on the same domain. And in order to achieve that, you would be using multiple ports. So for example, um, I could have a server running on port one, I could have a server running on port two. So I would have two, two things running on the same website. In our case, we will only need one, one port and the one we will be using is 2000. It could be anything, but um, for the project, I will be using 2000. And obviously port is a bit more complex than that, but that's all you need to know for now. Okay, so in order to do file communication with Express, this is what we will need to code. So there we go. And that's it. That's the first and only time we will be using Express in the entire video game creation. Um, so because that's the only time we will be using it, I won't go too much into the detail. Obviously, if we, if you want to make a full website with multiple pages, then you will need to understand how Express works a little bit more. But in our case, because our game is only one page, that's all you need to know. And even if you don't really understand what's going on, it's not really that important. Okay, so in this video series, I want to focus on making a multiplayer game rather than just a general website. So that's why I won't cover that too much. Um, but long story short, what's going on is we create a server, we make it listen to the port 2000. So this means whenever there's a request to the port 2000, our server will be notified. And depending on the request, we will do a certain action. So for example, if the request is nothing, so for example, we go to mywebsite.com port 2000, then the query is nothing. So this is the function that will be called. And in that case, we will sim simply send the file client um, slash index. And if the query starts with client, we will send the file requested. And as you can see um, with that system, if the query is server slash server something, so for example, um, securefile.js, um, this will do absolutely nothing because it does not match nothing and it does not match slash clients. So this request will do nothing. So that's why the client can only request stuff in the client folder or if he specifies nothing, then by default, it's the equivalent of requesting the client slash index file. So now at this point, you're probably wondering what the domain will be because the port is 2000 the um, path will depend on the file we are requesting. But for the domain, you probably don't own a domain. Um, so how it works is that by default, your computer uh, has a domain that is called local host. So if you go to local host, it's exactly like requesting to yourself. So in all our example, the domain will be local host. So what we are going to do is to modify the index file to something else. So if you remember correctly, the index file is inside client and then index file over here. And I'm going to put hello world, gonna save. And here, if I go to localhost 2000, so localhost is the domain and 2000 is the port with a um, colon in the middle, we press enter. Well, it will not work because you need to start the server. So not app.js. So now the server is started. If I refresh, I will see L world. So the server sent me that file. If I change the content of that file and I refresh, um, it will be different. So right now what the what's going on is that um, the query is nothing because we didn't put anything after the 2000. So we go inside that function over here and we send the file client slash index. But another thing we could do is to actually specify something in the query, for example, slash client, and we can actually specify anything in the client folder. So I could specify image bullets. So as the server A, give me the content of slash image slash bullet, and the server would, will send me the appropriated image. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next episode. So in the next episode, what I will be covering is socket IO. So communication with package. So it's a little bit more, you know, it's a little bit different, but it's a lot more powerful. And that's the main communication we will be using for our multiplayer game. So thanks again for watching and see ya.